If you can draw a circle or a square in Microsoft Paint, then you can learn how to use a CNC machine. In fact, that's why I bought this one right here. It came with software that's intuitive and easy to use. You don't have to know how to program. You don't have to know how to code. It's really as simple as using the mouse on a computer. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five things you need to know to design projects that you can cut on a CNC machine. All of that design work is done in the software. So right here on screen, I've got the software up. This is called Carbide Create. It came with the CNC machine. One reason why I picked this machine is because it came with good free software. The first thing you want to do is set up your workspace. So imagine that you've got a big piece of material that's sitting on top of your CNC machine. And you're going to cut parts out of that material. That's what this view shows you. Head over here to the gears and make sure you have it set up. So my piece is 38 wide and 49 tall from the front to the back of the machine. Most of my projects are made out of three quarter inch MDF. For those of you who are new to my channel, I build speakers and I use my CNC machine to cut parts for speaker projects. MDF is typically true to size, so if you're dealing with something like MDF, you can just punch in the size right here. For pretty much any other material like plywood or a natural wood product, you want to actually grab some calipers and measure it before you punch that in. You can set the zero height. I always set mine to the top, meaning I'm going to use the top as my zero. And then the toolpath zero, you can set zero anywhere you want. I always set it to the lower left. Then I can choose the material type. I can choose my type of machine and the retract height. So the retract height tells you how far up the machine will move on its Z axis, the vertical axis. And right here, you can set the units to inches or millimeters, whichever is your preference. I'm going to use inches because I'm in the United States. Hit OK and you're all set up and ready to start designing your project. A big part of that design process is laying out all of your parts on your workpiece. You want to figure out a way to do that as efficiently as possible. So before you actually start designing things, you want to take a look at the grid. Go right over here to this grid and when you hover the mouse over that grid it says set grid so just click on that and I like to do a grid spacing of a quarter of an inch set that to anything you like but I have a tendency to think in quarter inch increments and that just fits my workflow better. Real quick, a little bit about the machine. This is a Shapeoko 5 Pro. I went with this model right here because it was a big upgrade from their previous model. This one uses ball screws. The previous version of this machine used belts and belts will stretch and snap. Now it's about to get real. You wanna start laying out all of your parts for your project. And to do that, you need to draw a bunch of shapes, AKA vectors. So right over here, you can create vectors. And for a project like this, we're gonna create a really simple vector, a rectangle. So we're gonna click on create rectangle and then move over to the workpiece and draw a rectangle. Now in this software, you don't have much control with the mouse just drawing. So don't worry too much about drawing the perfect rectangle. Instead, just draw a shape and then come over here to the parameters and set the size. Let's say we want it to be 15 inches wide and 12 inches tall. Then I'm going to use the scroll reel to zoom in. I'm going to grab this corner right here and I'm going to move over three grids and up three grids. So I'm going to be three quarters of an inch away from the edge of the material. I do that because I'm going to cut these parts out with a quarter inch bit and that'll leave a half inch ring around the outside of my workpiece. And I need that so that I can clamp the workpiece down to the CNC table. The next thing I like to do is I like to label things. So I'm going to go over here to the T for text. I'm just going to type the word bottom because this is going to be the bottom of my subwoofer box. Now it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to go over here to transform and scale, and I'm going to make it about six inches wide. Now later, if I want to, I can use the CNC machine to cut the word bottom into the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is grab that part, hit control C to copy, control V to paste, and I'm going to make a part that's the exact same size. That's going to be my top. I'm going to lay out all these pieces off camera because it takes a few minutes to do that and it's kind of boring to watch. Okay, everything's all laid out. Now I need a hole in one of these parts because I need a place to mount the speaker. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to create vector. I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to make that a four and a half inch radius circle, which would be a nine inch diameter, which would be roughly what you would need for a 10 inch subwoofer. So there we go. We got a circle here on the front. So what I'm going to do now is highlight the front and highlight the circle and then right over here, here, under transform, I'm looking for align vectors here. I'm going to hit align vectors and I'm going to center that just like that. That didn't work. Here's why it didn't work. It's based on the order at which you select them. So I'm going to select the circle first and then the 
cutout <laughs> for the front baffle. And I'm gonna try that again. There we go. Now my circle is in the exact center of the front of the speaker. Now I'm gonna show you how to work with layers. So what I'm gonna do here is hold down the shift key and click on all of my text, each piece individually. Then I'm gonna type an L for layers. That brings up the layers menu. And I'm going to hit a plus to add a layer. And I'm gonna type the word labels. I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to click on this little button right here and move selection to layer. And what that allows me to do is turn the layers on and off. So if those labels are in my way, I can just hide them and they're out of the way. They're not deleted. They're just out of my way. The next step is to take all of the outer cutouts, pull up the layer menu again and do a layers for the outer cutouts. And again, just move selection to the layer and I can hide those layers again. That leaves this circle, that's my inner cutout. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do layers again, and I'm gonna do an inner cutout. And again, move the selection to the layer and hide it. It looks blank, it's not. I can just pull the layers back up and add the layers whenever I need them or get rid of them when I don't. So learning to work with layers is gonna speed up your process. Nothing I've shown you so far is really all that special. You're just drawing shapes inside of computer software. But here is where the rubber meets the road. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on tool paths. And then we're going to choose contour and we're going to select by layer and we're gonna choose our outside cuts and hit okay. This is where you tell the CNC machine how to make cuts. The first thing you're gonna do is change the tool. For some reason it defaults to a 1 8 of an inch bit. I like to do most of my cutting, especially on MDF, with a quarter inch upcut bit. And we'll choose that bit, we will select okay. Then we get to set the depth per pass. So the standard rule of thumb is to not go more than one half of the width of the bit. So if it's a quarter inch bit, I need to go an eighth of an inch or 0.125 inches. The plunge rate controls how fast the Z axis dives down into your work material. What I like to do is slow that down to about 10 inches per minute. The feed rate tells you how fast the machine's gonna move left to right. I like to do about 100 inches per minute. The machine I've got can easily go up to 125 inches per minute, but I find that I get better dust collection and cleaner cuts when I slow it down a bit. Then I'm gonna go right here to the cutting depth. So my start depth is gonna be zero inches. That's the zero point. And then I'm gonna plunge it down all the way through the entire piece of material. I'm gonna use the stock bottom, 4.75 inches. Next, and this is very important, is the offset direction. For all the pieces I'm cutting right now, I'm gonna be making an outline around my piece. So I'm gonna choose outside right. And when I do that, all of my pieces will be the exact dimensions that I specified when I drew them in the software. We'll come back to the tabs in just a minute. For the name, I like to give it a custom name. I'm gonna call it Outer Cuts, and I'm gonna hit OK. Now what I'm gonna do is hit L for layers, and I'm gonna hide all of those outside cuts so I don't have to see them anymore. Then I'm gonna go back to the contour toolpath, and I'm going to select my inside cuts. So I'm going to hit OK going to be using the same router bit, but I'm going to go back in and double check and make sure I've got the feed rate where I want it and hit OK. Once again, I'm going to use the stock bottom. And this time, instead of choosing the outside right, I'm going to choose the inside left. I'm going to call this the speaker cutout. Now the question is, do I want to go ahead and have the CNC machine cut out all of the labels? so that it's easier to put this all together? And the answer to that question is, yes, I think I would. Instead of contour, I'm gonna to go to pocket and I'm going to select by layer and again, which in this case is the labels and hit okay. Gonna be using the exact same router bit, but this time I'm gonna make that depth 1 16th of an inch. So that's just gonna lightly graze the surface. You always wanna go in when you're doing your tool paths and make sure that you've got your plunge rate and feed rate, step over and depth of pass. So the step over is how much the bit's gonna move over. So it's a quarter inch bit and it's gonna move over in eighth of an inch increments. And we'll hit okay. We're gonna rename that labels and choose okay. Now what I'm gonna do is hit show simulation and the software will simulate all the cuts for me and show me where everything's going to be. And we can see that I've got something wrong with my lettering. I know what it is. The letters just aren't big enough to really show up. I need to switch to a smaller bit. And I'm not really going to worry about that because I can figure out which parts are which parts. It's a pretty easy project. This machine comes with two different pieces of software. I've been showing you the first one 
Carbide Create, you use that to lay out your designs and set up your tool paths. The other piece of software is called Carbide Motion. Carbide Motion is the software that actually controls the machine. It can be a bit of a pain to jump back and forth between the two, but that's okay with me because I don't have to know any G code. G code is the underlying code that runs anything like this, whether it's a CNC machine or a laser cutter. What's the point of all this work on this complicated CNC machine to make a rectangular box? If all you're doing is making rectangles, you really don't need a CNC machine. You can do that a lot faster with a cheap circular saw and an edge guide. I'm gonna show you right now one of those things you can do with a CNC that kicks things up to the next level. So I'm gonna zoom in on the bottom right here. I'm gonna grab that piece, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And then I'm gonna take that piece and I'm just gonna move it off to the side somewhere. So I'm going to highlight this vector right here and I'm going to go over here to transform. Underneath transform I'm looking for offset vectors. I'm going to choose a distance of 0.75 and I'm going to choose to the inside and hit apply. And it made another vector that's 0.75 in from all sides from the original. So it's an inch and a half shorter and an inch and a half narrower. Then I'm going to grab both of those. I'm going to hit L for layers. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call that dado and hit OK. And then of course, move the selection to the layer and hit OK. So now I've got one more layer and that's a layer for dado cuts. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it over and lay it on top of the bottom. Then we're gonna go back to my tool paths. I'm gonna choose pocket and select by layer. I'm gonna select that new dado layer and hit OK. I'm gonna cut another pocket and this time I'm gonna use an eighth of an inch step over just like before. So the bit's gonna cut out around the perimeter. Then it's gonna move in an eighth of an inch and make another pass. Crank that feed rate up to 125. Since I'm not gonna be taking out as much material on each pass, I can speed up the feed rate a little bit. And plunge rate, gonna make that 10 again and hit OK. As far as the depth goes, I'm going to make that depth 0.25. And what that's going to do is it's going to go around the edge of my workpiece and it's going to cut a quarter inch dado in the bottom of my subwoofer box. That will allow me to take MDF and lay it inside those dados. That's going to give me a really strong glue joint and it's going to serve as a guide to make it easier to put the box together when it comes time for assembly. Now I'm going to go ahead and add dados to the top of the box as well as some dados to the front and the back. I'm going to do that off camera because that does take a little bit of time. All right, so that's finished. I'm going to run the simulation real quick and show you what that looks like. It starts off by cutting the dados. I rearrange the toolpath so the dados go first. Then it's going to cut out my labels. I got rid of the label in the front of the box because that's the obvious part because there'll be a big speaker hole in it. And after it cuts out all of that, it's going to trace around the perimeters, cut out the parts, and cut out the speaker hole. And I went ahead and added a two inch hole for a terminal cup. This next part is the most important part. I've gone into my layers and I've hidden the dados and the labels. I'm going to highlight everything. And then over here under edit, I'm looking for this right here. This is edit tabs. I'm going to hit edit tabs and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add tabs to all of my pieces. I like to have four tabs per piece. The bigger pieces, I like to have two tabs per side. The terminal cup's kind of a small piece. You can probably get away with two tabs. So what these tabs are going to do is they're going to hold all of the pieces together while you're cutting so the pieces don't shift. If the pieces shift while you're cutting, it's going to make a colossal mess. When I set this up, I knew I was going to be using a quarter inch bit and I've got three quarters of an inch from the edge right here. I'll have a good, strong, sturdy edge all around the entire piece. I can clamp my work piece down with that edge. And then in between each piece, I'm gonna have a quarter inch bit come through here and cut out this first chunk. There'll be a second chunk that'll stay as part of the frame. And then there'll be a third chunk that the quarter inch bit cuts out. And these tabs are gonna hold my pieces to that inner lattice work that's going to surround all of my parts. That's gonna keep everything nice and stable and the parts aren't gonna come loose while I'm cutting. If the parts come loose while you're cutting, you're done. You've ruined your project. And so these tabs are probably the most important thing. And after adding the tabs, we can go back into the simulation. With the simulation done, we can roll in here and we can expect all of our tabs. And then we've got a good firm structure. You always run a simulation and make sure you've checked your work. This should be a pretty stable project. We should be able to cut it no problem. That's just the design phase. Now we've got to set up the machine and make the cuts. That's a topic for a whole other video. I'm actually editing that video right now and I'll upload it right here as soon as it's done.